the journey program the namongekera industrial park also known as the lianshen industrial park in kapeka has had successful industrial activity since 2015 when it was launched by his excellency yoweri kaguta museveni the president of the republic of uganda however many ugandans think that the economic development activity started in this area after the groundbreaking ceremony 8 years ago the namongekera kapeka land has been a beehive of industrial activity since the colonial times In the inception of Christianity in Uganda, the Church Missionary Society pioneered religion, education, health, agriculture, business, and governance. The British Protectorate then established a commercial arm in London in 1903, the Uganda Company Limited, to take over the assets of the Church Missionary Society accumulated during their strategic evangelism and mission. The company's first objective was to acquire and carry on the undertakings which had been carried on by the Church Missionary Society in the Uganda British Protectorate and to provide a business-like solution to the labor question in Uganda. By 1907, Mr. Blodo, a skilled rubber planter from Ceylon, and Mr. Lee Wilson, who had previously been a wheat farmer in Canada, began to develop the Uganda Company Limited Estates in Namunkekera, Bulemezi County. Namunkekela was allocated on a 99-year lease to the white owners for agricultural purposes, but they could not get a mineral title on that piece of land since a law had already been passed barring non-Ugandans from acquiring mineral land. It was originally a property of the Uganda Company. The Uganda Company was the was the industrial arm of the Church Missionary Society. They acquired this land 1946 on 20th November that's when they got a freehold of about 2200 acres. Uh, later alone 1958 the Uganda company sold the property to Mr. Prabhudas Kadidas Shah uh, for about 130000 shillings. at that time then in 1966 an african group called industrial coffee growers purchased it from the mr prabhudas kardas shah and managed that entity until uh, that land until 1972 when it was acquired i think by force by East Mengo Growers Cooperative Union and then we purchased it from Indus, uh, East Mengo Growers 1997 so all along this Kapeka site has been an industrial estate so to say from Uganda company to PKS to industrial coffee growers to East Mengo all of them were basic extractive produce cotton send it abroad now the the whole scenario in kapeka has changed completely because we are utilizing local materials to produce local uh, local and regionally consumed products and even others for for export it started with the cotton and coffee later on they had gone into animals So that's the brief background of the land at Kapeka. The land title now is approximately 78 years old. But the recent transformation as a re- as a result of FDI from China is less than 10 years. So the transformation that has taken place there now is because of the FDI for foreign direct investment. and the local contribution was just land which we never sold to them we gave it to them at nominal price so that to, so that we are able to attract them into the area the chinese investors in the namongekera industrial park also known as the liaoshen industrial park have set up a chain of industries that manufacture a variety of goods which previously used to be imported but are now manufactured in uganda for both the local and international market therefore 
providing jobs for many youths. The industrial park right now has access to 1,280 acres, of which I think they have used about 400 acres only, so they still have a lot of land for expansion. From 2006, in the economic development strategy, we planned and we are still planning to have about 25 such industrial parks like Capec. I think like nine or ten of them are already active. That is Nama Anve, Ruzira, Buyikwe, Mbale, Kasese, um, Rila, there is designated land for Rila, the one of Sorot is active, Mbale is very active. So it's an overall strategy, Kapeka is not in isolation. Then we have got planned ones in Papuach. There is a planned one in Kisolo. There is a planned one in, uh, I think, Lakai side, Mutukula at the border there. So or originally we planned for 25, but I think those ones which are active are 12. And I think the strategy is to, to complete the 25 by 2030. Guru has bigger chances of a bigger, bigger projects, like the Atiak Sugar. Atiak Sugar is one of the biggest investments undertaken in the region. Uh, on your way back, I think you should visit the Guru Logistics Hub, because that one is already invested in. Then uh, Pakwach Inland Port, where the railway is going to terminate, the Tororo, Pakwach railway line is going to terminate. You could expect, you could expect a bigger investment in in Achori than that one of Kapek, especially focusing on the South Sudanese market, and then the the northeastern northeastern DRC. I think there are very very good possibilities. This is industrialization. It is uh, industrialization so that we can move more people from the agriculture side into industry and services. Because as you, as you have seen in Kapeka, the employees in the park are almost equal to the employees outside the park who are self-employed. The ones inside the park, is, uh, they are employed by the factories, but the ones outside the park in the service sectors are equally big. So I think the, the, the projection looks very good. The projection looks very good except the, the cost of doing business in terms of power. The, the cost of power is still high and the road infrastructure around the industrial parks is not good and it has a lot of traffic but i think the the projection looks very very good uganda is one of the countries attracting the most foreign direct investment fdi in east africa the country is rich in natural resources and its geographic location gives it an ideal strategic base to become a regional hub of trade and investment However, in the fight to improve household income, FDI has a limit. There is a smaller problem there that however much FDI you get, it cannot fight household, household poverty in rural areas. That's why you cannot rely only on industrial parks to fight poverty. You must rely on the industrial parks to create products for exports and for import substitution but we have another medicine specifically for household uh, incomes and that is the PDM now. That's why for the last uh, four years we have shifted from input distribution to revolving fund of PDM. And so far we have injected I think 2.2 2 .2 trillion I think by now, 
into the PDM. Because the FDI cannot fight the household poverty, you must have another channel. The industrial parks will give us jobs, will give us uh, products, but it will not fight that household poverty. That's why we have the parish development model, which has been very successful in uh, many situations. I must, I must also add that there are more industries outside industrial parks. Like when you are driving along Bombo Road, I think you saw. More, there are more standalone industries than those in the industrial parks. So the industrialization agenda for Uganda, I think, is on the right track. If you look at those guys who are working in the industrial parks, they have been learning on the job. They were not prepared to work in factories, but they have very the, the Ugandans are very quick at adapting. All those people you see working in the industries were not trained for that. They have just adapted. Imagine if they had been skilled for that. The output would have been much, much higher. The government has established over 20 regional skilling centers, which train over 5,000 people who are certified by Directorate of Industrial Training to prepare them for industrial park jobs. Operation Wealth Creation, an intervention to efficiently facilitate national socio-economic transformation with a focus on raising household incomes and wealth creation by transforming subsistence farmers into commercial farmers to end poverty, works closely with the industrial parks. We made 14 episodes for our work and we gave it to UBC. We sold it to UBC, but they have not paid us. So you go and watch those films, because you, there you will say like now, if you watch the, the, the film around the industrial park and OWC, you will see the, di the direct benefit. Because a lot of all the, all the chicken that is eaten in the industrial park, all the posho, all the, all the raw materials, including stones, including the, those materials they use for ceramics, the labor, I think it has, there is, a, there, is a, there is a connection between the manufacturing and agriculture. There is also a connection between manufacturing and the service sector. Now, I think they are trying to add in the tourism as, aspect. Because the trade show, I think, will increase some tourism, industrial tourism aspects. So, I think they have done some good work. The Namunkikira Industrial Park is said to host a trade show aimed at attracting local manufacturers and showcasing the industrial estate's potential. The event scheduled for September 27th to 29th, 2024 is a big celebration of 80 years of existence. The organizers of the show have come to realize that what they are seated with in Kapeka as workers, it's, it's mainly my staff, my senior staff who have worked with me for 10 years. I think out of guilt they have, they have decided to do this because they have been earning salaries and, but now they are, I think they are beginning to pay back. Yes, they are beginning to pay back, headed by Namara, Joselyn, uh, Deo, all those guys. They know everything that is happening there. Because for me, I have never earned any money from there. For them, they have been ad earning. So I think now it's time they have thought through their... They have caucused and they say we should launch this show, which is which I support very much. Because at least for them now, they seem to have understood that they need to do marketing for the industrial park. And I think they have done it very well this time. But instead of inviting people for free, I think people should have paid to come and see. Because it's not a small exercise to host those people. You know, in the olden time, people used to go to to in the Kiza in Masaka to see how a small farm can be developed. But now Kapeka is a destination where people go to learn how to industrialize. This was the whole economy of Uganda from 1903 to 1953. And from 1953 
other people came into Namunkeker and then us now. But you should now be careful to watch because earlier on I had read another book called How Europe and Developed Africa. Now this seems, Namunkekera seems to be answering that question but it may be geopolitical again. Because this time it is the Chinese, you have seen the way the Chinese have worked. And I recently, in their FOCAC, the, the recent FOCAC meetings, I think Kapeka was very, was high on the agenda. So they were, they were projecting it as a success. So the, the people who have organized the, the trade show, I, I wish them all the best. And for UBC, give this show the maximum coverage that you can give them, but also study. Start to deepen your, your understanding of the economic history of Uganda. Like you have seen here, the land title is 78 years old. It has been used by four or five groups of people. Now in future we shall be debating who has developed it better than the other one. But all that, all that is, all that is enshrined in the subject, in the, in the subject that we are beginning to study now called Msevenomics. Because all this that is happening in the country needs to be studied in the context of Musevenomics, the man who has been who has been driving the economic policies which have shaped our direction up to now, up to this level of now industrial parks. The first principle of Musevenomics is security of persons and property. The second principle of Musevenomics is privatization and liberalization. Number three is return of Asian properties, those ones which had been confiscated. Number four is uh, diversification of crops. Like now people in northern Uganda are beginning to grow coffee and eastern Uganda which was not there before, so they are diversifying. Then number five is regional integration. Number six UPE and USE. Number seven is cost of doing business. Number eight is something else. There is corruption is number nine. Fighting corruption is number nine. Number 10 is monetization of the whole economy. That is the PDM. Bring everybody who is outside the money economy into the money economy. Then uh, skills development, skilling, like what uh, Quera was talking about there, skilling of people, skills, because learning and skilling are two different things. So then number 12, I think, is uh, solving the youth unemployment through industrialization. So Kapeka is part of a bigger thinking. Because Kapeka alone and industries alone cannot fight the other homestead income problem. That's why we have the PDM. The Namukeka Liaonshen Industrial Park Trade Expo shall bring together local players and potential investors in the industrial zone. All Ugandans should use this opportunity to come see, learn, and appreciate the investments in this industrial park and its significance in the economic development of the country.